Hey guys, it's Phoenix. I am back after how many days was it? Four days? Five days? Six days? I don't know. I'm recording this really early, working really hard <laughs> on releasing this this entire map that we've been working on for for 31 months. So welcome to any of the new viewers, if there are any. This is a Pokemon in vanilla Minecraft journey, and that's finally come to an end after 31 months. It's crazy to say that, but I'm not going anywhere. So the first part is going to be longer than usual, and that's because the journey to the first gym takes quite a bit of time, and so I'm going to try my best to cover everything there is, uh, or everything that's important in finishing this game in its entirety. So here we go, let's right click to start the game. Here we go. So what's going on here is you're looking at the first dialogue, you're watching TV, watching Professor Cedar talking about the incidents that have been happening in Chalet Town or just north of it. And there's a massive explosion, and and I remember here I tried to really make it seem like there's an explosion on scene, so I tilted the player's head a little bit and just blacked out the TV screen. Um, just to really get a good sense. And there are bells playing, so you're transported to Atraman Town for the intro scene. And of course, I had to include shock right there. <laughs> uh, the server right at the very end of the development was hosted by Shockbite and sponsored by them. So huge thank you to all of those guys at Shockbite for actually providing us with a free server to to finish this off. So now you're back in your bedroom as every classical Pokemon game begins, and we have the music going. So this is Serenity Town music. Here's your player card. There's your Pokedex card. There's your Pokemon. There's your empty bag. And there's your player card, so very empty, just starting out the game. So the first thing you need to do after hearing your mum's voice is leave the room and go downstairs and speak to mum. She's going to start reassuring you that it's safe here in Serenity Town and then direct you to the map. So here's your first interaction. Go over to the map and right click with your A button. And that's how most things happen in the game. Apart from cutscenes, that actually happens automatically. So right click. Click on the arrow and you'll receive the region map and it'll be straight into your hotbar. That's how you access it. It really does nothing else other than provide you with a pictorial representation of the region. Then she's going to direct you to another item that's going to magically appear on the bench. It's the Pokedex that's also going to appear in your hotbar. So you already have two of your four hotbar slots occupied. The other two you'll receive much later in the game. So now she kicks you out, you're now 15, she gives you a soda pop and $100, and that's it. Now your mom's going to be left alone, at home, for the start of the game. Alright, so leave your house and enter the theatre. Here you need to get a potion that will execute the next cutscene. The theatre doesn't really do too much in Serenity Town, although it is um, a building that does provide you with some story points. does provide an indication of what's to come. Okay, so once you have the potion, leave the theatre and then speak to these two lovely ladies, Kayleen and Professor Cedar. Kayleen will be your rival, or more or less just a friend. It's not really a rival, um, but you do battle her sometimes. This conversation is really unimportant, but it does direct you to go straight to the shop. So that's the first thing you need to do. Go straight to the shop and speak to the cashier. The shop is on the other side of Serenity Town and you need to speak to the cashier who will give you a rare candy. And then after that's done, go straight back to Kayleen and speak with her. Kayleen will be back in her bedroom and you can speak with her and she'll talk to you about her worries and concerns about how her mother dodged death. So Professor Cedar is a strong figure and so is her daughter. Following that, go straight to the Pokemon Lab. Cedar will give you a parcel and direct you to Mr. Timerson's house for a quick quest. There's not really too much going on in the first sequence of the game, 
It's just helping you get used to the controls and your walking speed, which is relatively slow, but it does speed up eventually, even before the first gym. That's where you're gonna get your running shoes. I'll get to that later on in the video. So I'm really just trying to condense everything here because part one's gonna be very long. Um, so I won't really focus too much on gameplay, but more or less what you need to do to get to the first gym. That's really the most important, isn't it? Okay, so Mr. Timerson will flee and that directs you to the entrance of Route 17 with your waiver, your new item, which will be used uh, to get through some restricted areas in the game. So speak with Cedar, and you have log.zip, the guard, just staring at you. He's gonna let you walk past. There is one other item that you can get before leaving, and that is a burn heal, which is located just left of the fountain. So go and grab that, it's not too important because you won't really get burned in the upcoming battles. So return back to Route 17, the region music will change. The musicians on the team did a magnificent job. I truly believe that the music does complement the game very well. There's a potion right here, just grab that. You might need it in the battle. Don't want to waste your soda pop, especially with your HP um, being relatively low at this stage. So here's the first crucial point in the story. You're going to meet two of the antagonists in the game. We've got Jason and Melissa, both grunts of Team Tempest. It's like Team Rocket, but we've got Team Tempest in this game. Matters will not be too difficult, but here Professor Cedar provides you with the very first Pokemon in the journey, Pyraze. Pyraze is a fire type that will evolve at level 30 into Magnamic. We'll get to that. You're going to initiate a battle with Melissa, who's going to use a level 5 Julabo. This battle shouldn't be difficult, and even if you do need to use your potion, that's okay you actually are given an attack boost because of the weather. But if you run into some problems, make sure you use your potion. I do recommend that you do win this battle because you will level up Pyrays quite a few times. So here you can see that I did use a potion. And there we go, Pyrace has leveled up and now learns Ember, which is why I wanted you to actually win this one. So after the battle, Cedar heals your Pokemon and then Jason comes up and says, enough messing around and wants to battle you too, and I guess that's what's going to happen. Can't avoid these battles really. Unless you lose the first one, you actually get kicked out and sent back home. In any case, let's go and actually fight this guy. He uses two level 3 Jewelabos and a level 4 Jewelabo. So, nothing new here, no diversity whatsoever. He does tend to have duplicates and doesn't change. His character does not change throughout the game. So I was easily able to beat him with embers just throughout. Nothing crazy. Even the level 4 Jewelabo didn't stand a chance. So if you manage to defeat Melissa and Jason, Cedar will want to battle you as well. If you lose any of those first two battles, you will be sent home. She uses a level 7 Havani and a level 5 starter Pokemon, Laviam. So Laviam is a fire type, Havani is a bug. So it does take time to do damage to Ember, make sure you do that.
In Lavia, it doesn't really matter. I think Ember also does some damage too, but Tackle is obviously the way to go. If you need to use the HP restoring moves, make sure you use those, because winning these trainer battles does help ease the pain early in the game when you fight your rival. So she congratulates you for winning, you gain $1,000 again, an extra bonus. Alright, so here's the status of my team after that encounter. And then you're gonna head home, but before you can do that, you're halted by another cutscene of Arceus appearing in the Route 17 tunnel, which marks another critical point in the story. I also need to mention that I'm using a pre-release version of this map, so some of the things that you see here won't actually make it to the full version. So that dialogue you see there actually isn't supposed to appear in the full version, it didn't make it. So head home after that, it is really strange to see the mom at the Atraman Town Shrine, but here is another critical point. So once you head home, you do pick up mom's note and you see that she is heading to Atraman Town. So it doesn't seem to be just a coincidence. There's a supernatural connection, and Arceus seems to be involved. Alright, finally you can go to the lab and collect your starting Pokemon. You have a choice of Ellerind, Larvium, and Krillbard. You'll see Kayleen speaking to her mom again. Uh, she seems to be very insistent and stubborn. <laughs> um, so see, it's going to allow you to have a choice. So whether you want to keep Pyrays or not, it's up to you. If you click yes, you do keep Pyrays. If you click no, you will give Pyrays back. You will be able to catch Pyrays later on in the game. But in any case, here are your starting three Pokemon. You've got a Grass type Ellerind, Fire type Larviam, and a Water type Crobat. I actually go over to the PC first just to show you that you can deposit him if you want to. All the details are on the website that I'll leave in the description. Of course, it's up to you, but I do pick Ellerind in the very end. So once you're done, leave the lab and go straight back to Route 17. That's where your Pokemon journey will officially begin. So I'm actually going to skip most of this because the wild battles are fairly self-explanatory. If you've played Pokemon, all you need to do is catch whatever you want. So the wild grass is just to the right of Route 17. You will find either a Catlin or a Lupus. Catlin is an electric normal and Lupus is a dark normal. For me, I really don't think there are any strong differences between them. They have similar stats, but Catlin does slightly win out due to speed, but it's really entirely up to you whether you want an electric type early on in the game. There are some more later on, but the main idea here is to train your Pokemon to at least level 10 before you even consider fighting your rival. Okay, a couple of things you can do before you fight your rival. Just on this ledge up here, there is a Pokeball. You might want some more, so what you need to do is skip Kayleen. So when you enter Mezzo Town, just don't go near her. What you can do is skip her on the left, cross this bridge, go over to the Pokemon Center. You can heal there as well. Um, you can also buy some Pokeballs there. You can also cross the bridge on the left. That will get you the TM Dig. 
If you don't know what Dig does, it's a ground type move that increases evasiveness in this game. It does something completely different. Some of the moves in this game do do slightly different things. It does act like an escape rope, but you do need to be near the exit for it to work. So it doesn't matter anyway. I highly recommend you use Dig, even if it's for the first half of the game. So here's a quick glance at my team. I have a Pyres, Ellerind, Catelyn, and Lupus. I leveled up Pyres to at least level 15, and that gave me a huge edge. Didn't actually need to use any of the other Pokemon. Alright, go back to the Pokemon Center and heal if you need to. There is an item just hiding inside this little shelter. It's an escape rope. But other than that, it's time for you to actually enter Traverse Cave, or the first portion of it anyway. So enter through this tunnel. If you travel a bit further, you will find a potion. There are some NPCs hiding inside the tunnel. Don't need to talk to them. There's another potion just up ahead. Make sure you collect that. Continue down the path, it is pretty long, but not as bad as Traverse Cave, which you're about to see. There is a Paralyzed Heal just on the right, if you just follow the pathway, and there's a Pokeball just hiding behind the two crates on the left. So if you continue down the path, just on the right is the actual place you need to be, but there is an escape rope just before you make the right turn. After you've gotten that, just return to the tunnel and then you can start finding some new wild Pokemon, a Rockleth or Oinklet or Snorchop. Out of all the Pokemon in the game, I do think Oinklet is the most annoying, especially with all the Confuse Rays, so make sure you do catch one and it's also a very useful HM Slave if you don't wish to run him because things are going to get really nasty in Traverse Cave later on. Regardless, make your way to the very end of the tunnel and you will find what you need to find, and that is the Azure Flute Shard, what Professor Cedar tasked you with earlier. Okay, you're done here in Metzo Town, it's time for you to make your way to Traverse Cave. Here you can see that I've gotten TM70 Flash. It's entirely up to you whether you want Flash, it just helps you see in the dark, but this walkthrough will guide you through Traverse Cave, so you don't need to worry. If you're more used to a written version of this walkthrough, make sure you click the link in the description, because this place is a menace. Fight this trainer over here who's guarding the rare candy, just on the left. And fight this trainer on the right, who uses a bunch of dogs, and once you defeated him, which might take some time, still very useful training, drop down these two ladders and you will find a potion. Okay, now here's a little tip. Because you don't really want to face the wild until you're ready, and just to make life easier, leave this cave right now, go back to the Pokemon Center and buy yourself some repels. By porting this game over to 3D, caves become all the more annoying because you really can't see all four directions around you, which makes the wild Pokemon far more irritating. So repels will help you greatly, especially when you really don't want to fight any wild Pokemon. Use them sparingly and only when you start 
feeling like that this cave is never gonna end. So go back to the cave, climb the ladder, you'll find a nugget on the left. There are a few more trainers here, you can fight them if you wish to. If you're gonna be using Repel throughout the entire cave, I recommend you fight all these trainers for the training. Climb down this ladder, you will find a Pokeball. There are no more items for a while, just keep going. Here's a familiar spot. If you've played promo map number one, Catching Arceus, this place should look very familiar to you. So the quote here from this trainer I think is really fitting. So just before you climb this ladder, I do recommend you use your first repel because things can get really bad because the wild Pokemon will begin showing up now. All right, so climb this ladder. You can see there's a sign now warning you. I will not encounter any new Pokemon in the wild, but you will find some more Oinklets, Rockcliffs, and Snorchops, and also a rare Kragoraunt, but really not the best Pokemon. You will encounter a fanboy trainer called Bleeber who has a very... <laughs> humorous quote. Um, this was suggested by my brother, so this was a suggestion by my brother and uh, I kept it because I thought it was pretty funny. The fanboy trainers around this map actually do have some references for you to laugh at. Continue down the pathway, turn right, uh, the other two places are dead ends, and here you will find a repel. Again, very useful if you don't want to be irritated completely by this stupid cave, and I totally understand. Return to the fanboy trainer, turn left, fight the trainer, turn left, you will find a Pokeball. Go back to the trainer, but instead of passing him, turn left and then turn right, and that's the pathway around the boulder. You cannot walk over the boulder, so make sure you follow this. You can't go over the boulder, but you can go over this one. Walk over it. The exit is on the right, but there are some goodies that you can get by turning to the left. My repel wore off, you can see that I've actually encountered a Pokemon here. So you can see I've just reactivated my repel. Turn the corner, there is a caver trainer who uses two pandas, and those two you can catch very soon, um, but I do recommend that you leave them until you have some great balls, because it's a lot harder to catch them with Pokeballs. Walk past the trainer, grab the potion on the right, drop down the hole, you'll see the farmer again, and once again, turn around him, over the boulder, and this time take the right pathway to the exit. Simply follow what I'm doing here, there are a couple of exits here. It's, this is actually a very easy place to get lost. Take this ladder, and then take the ladder on the right. Take the next ladder down to the second to last level. You will find another trainer. He gives a lot of money if you beat him, although it is an optional trainer battle. Then return to the ladder and take it all the way to the top. And you'll find the guy who'll give you the Versus Seeker. So the reason why I told you to use repels is you can go back to that trainer which I told you to fight just then and use your Versus Seeker on him and you'll get a ton of money. But this is again optional, you can go to the Virgil Town Trainer, there's one guy there that I added since beta, and he will also provide you with some experience. Nevertheless, take the ladder back down, you're just on the edge of Route 18, final exit to Traverse Cave, and then make a little U-turn. My repel just wore off, look at that, I've just encountered two wild Pokemon in my entire Traverse Cave adventure. I think using a repel is worth it, because I hate, I despise this cave. Nothing against the builders, they did an amazing job. There's nothing like an annoying cave in a Pokemon game. Take this ladder all the way up, and you're now outside of Traverse Cave. Welcome to Route 18. Some, some very beautiful music, one of my favorites of the OST. Once you drop down the ledge, that's it, you cannot enter Traverse Cave anymore. So here you can actually capture the panda that I was talking about, the Steel Panda Ferrosaur. My recommendation is to wait until you have Great Balls and Ultra Balls before you go and grab these guys, and you can train them later on with your Versus Seeker, but we'll leave that for now. There are some items in there, but I'm sure you can actually get through Virgil Town without them. There's nothing really new in the Wild Grass, so I'm going to skip that. If you want some details, go onto the walkthrough that I've written down. Here you can get your running shoes from the Serenity Messenger, from the Messenger of your mom. So she gives you a pair of running shoes and you can now walk faster. You don't need to sprint, there's no sprinting in this game. There's nothing new here, there's a daycare you just saw, but it's out of business right now, hinting at some downloadable content in the future. But Route 18 is just here for you to relax after that Traverse Cave endeavor. It would have been a predicament, I think, if you didn't use a repel. It is a crazy place. Pith and Path. There's some new wild Pokemon here, but for some reason I skipped it. I decided to skip it for some reason. I think I really just wanted to get to Virgil Town. But here you can find some really nice Pokemon. There's a Visor, there's a Sonya, there's a Glissadior on the other side, the Ice Panda. But again, I highly recommend you skip it until you have some Great Balls and Notch Balls just to make your life easier. Visor is a Fighting type, Fairy type. Uh, Sand Sylph is very rare, but also very useful is a ground slash fairy type, and Sonya is just a flying type. Okay, so here is Virgil Town. Very beautiful place. Let's get straight to the Pokemon Center and heal first. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go back to Pith and Path, Route 18. There's a Pokeball just behind the boulder. And just on the outskirts of Virgil Town is a hidden trainer and some hidden items. We need to go over to the Nature Reserve. Don't need to pay an admission fee. You can talk to this guy and you can fight him as many times as you want. Use the Versus Seeker to your advantage. If you feel like you're really underleveled, he does use sort of half of the Gym Leader's team. So if you struggle against him, you're going to struggle against Gym Leader Louise. So I actually battled this guy quite a few times just to level up my Pokemon and evolve Pyres. He becomes a Fire Slash Rock type now, so I don't know whether that was such a great idea, evolving him, but level 30, I think it really does make things a lot easier against the Gym Leader. And finally, there's actually a hidden item just near the cobweb tree underneath the leaves. There's a hidden Great Ball. And finally, here is the museum in Virgil Town, Talk to the lady, she just tells you about where the fossils are in the game. They're in Earth Sire, so very, very late in the game, but just some piece of information for you. So here's my party, focused mainly on training Snorchop and Magnamic. Those will be my primary fighters against the gym leader. After healing, go straight into the gym and you'll fight the two preceding trainers, which are very easy. Even with a lower level team, you should not have any troubles defeating these two. If you have a fire type in your team, make sure you use those. Rame is not a grass type, it is a steel type, even so, fire type attack will damage him severely. For more details on the teams, make sure you visit the walkthrough online because I'm not really going to go through them. The first part of this walkthrough is going to be highly condensed. Make sure you use the flying types, if you caught Sonya, use him too, and Sansilf even better. And now here comes the gym leader, Louise. So I think what I'll do is just go through her Pokemon one by one. Brown Bar, very simple, just run a Flamethrower in or an Ember. Brown Bar is your typical Bug type that can easily be defeated by some Fire types. Trumps is now where you'll run into some issues. Trumps is a Grass slash Rock type, so your typical Fire type will not do anything. I highly suggest running a ground type move against him, even though Dig does have a times one effectiveness against him. It's gonna increase your evasiveness. And if you happen to have caught Glissadior, use him. Next, Romero again. If Romero uses Explosion, that's okay. Uh, but again, he's a steel type, use your fire type advantage. Quagga is probably one of the most annoying, so I highly suggest running a Confuse Ray just to stop him from healing. Really not much else to say there, just run those attacks through. With Miasma, run Dig or even some flying type moves from Sonya. You can see that when we developed this gym, we've decided not to make it so easy, so she's not just going to use grass types, she's going to use a really good variety. There's more of a theme rather than a typing set. So Miasma shouldn't be too difficult, but then Grapnel comes along and kills everything. If you can just run a Confuse Ray or even burn him, that's probably the best bet. Grapnel as a dragon type is immune to all of these elemental type moves. If you have Glissadior, use him, and if you call it Sandsilf, even better. Sandsilf will do very well because of the fairy type advantage. Apart from that, make sure you're highly leveled, at least level 22 for your team. Or if you have some primary fighters that you've trained up, make sure they're above 25 or even 30, so you won't have any difficulties against her, because she is a tough cookie. So there you go, if you manage to be victorious on your first try, congratulations, she is really tough. get your Topiary Badge, Azul Flute Shard, and Giga Drain TM. They have both parts of the Azul Flute Shard, and now you can progress into the story. And there you have it, that's the first part of this walkthrough. My voice is so dry, I've been speaking for like an hour, I recorded this at the same time I recorded the release video. This is highly condensed, I will actually speak a lot more in the next parts, but there's just a lot to cover for the first part, so thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next walkthrough. Subscribe for more creative content and Pokemon Videos can't say updates anymore. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna have to go. All right, take care.